Hi, I'm Dave Burkus, and this is the Burkus Report for Ion Business. Each time we meet, I have a chance to tell you two or three stories that really come from true, actual businesses that represent entrepreneurs that have succeeded wildly or failed miserably, but at least each one has created a lesson for us to learn. And so I'll tell you two or three of them today, and I hope that uh, these lessons will stick in your mind, and certainly they're lessons that have in mind, because in the end, they are lessons that uh, really apply to almost every business of any kind. The first one is not just as much a lesson as it is for me the way in which we think and plan and vision, and more importantly, how we develop our strategies. So my story goes back to the very first business I ever had. It was a record manufacturing company. I made it a virtual business. I ran it from the bedroom of my home and then moved into an old office building and took one small suite in the office building, but I was alone. I had no employees. And I was making enough money to have a fairly good living out of it. And in fact, I had asked a girl to marry me who ultimately did, and that was 47 years ago, by the way. And I knew that I had to hire my first employee if I wanted that company to grow, or I could be safe and comfortable and be able to grow the company myself, just not as large as I really had in mind for my own vision. And so I packed up a little bag and I went down to Ensenada, Mexico. And I sat on a rock. I checked into a hotel that I'd been in before and I sat on a rock, and this was a Friday night. And I thought about whether I was willing to trade security and an easy opportunity to pay for my marriage and be able to have a comfortable life for growth. And at the end of that night, I decided to go for the growth. And so I got a good sleep and the next morning before going home, I sat on that rock again. And this time, my object was to plan. How would I grow? When would I grow? Who would I hire? What would I do? And by the time I got in the car and came home, I had not only a vision, I had, for the first time perhaps, a strategy. And I exercised that strategy and grew that record company to more than 50 employees. It became a public company, and the rest of the story is very good. But you know, it gave me a lesson. Every one of us has a time when we need to go into a dark place just to think, where there are no cell phones and there are no other ways of being distracted. So let's call this your find your rock in Ensenada moment and see if maybe you can do the same thing. My second story is one for the computer company that I ran when we were growing so very fast that I wanted the employees to feel like I did, that this was an exciting time. And many of them did, but some of them were far removed and really didn't have a chance. Every time we had a month in which we had a brand new record for bookings or invoices or even cash receipts, I'd make a big deal out of it. I would hand out $100 bills. So the HR person would follow me around with a checklist Every time I would shake the hand of every employee, and there were hundreds of them, and hand them a $100 bill, and then we would put it on the payroll and, of course, take the taxes out and pay for the taxes ourselves. But the point was, here I was, CEO, showing as well as telling that growth means something and that everybody participates in the growth because everybody was helpful and responsible for that growth. And the lesson in that one is know your employees and behave as you'd like them to behave and let them see you behaving that same way. One more story while we have a little time. This one's a real lesson, and it comes from a book that I'd like to recommend for you, and the book is by Elias Goldrait, G-O-L-D-R-A-I-T, and the book is called The Goal, The Process of Ongoing Improvement. Now, you'll look at the book. It's about a 250-page book. It tells the story of a man who almost lost his marriage because he was drowning in his business and didn't have time to go home. And the story turns out to be one of statistical process implementation. What? If you read the book and read the story and then listen to what I'm about to tell you right now, it applies to virtually any environment, whether you manufacture software, whether you have a retail operation, no matter what you do, because there is always a bottleneck. And the book is about bottlenecks and removing them. Now think for a second about that. Let's say that you have an operation, whatever it be, Let's say that you have a plant with a machine that is going at maximum speed, even for three shifts, but isn't getting enough out of that machine to be able to serve the needs of all of the orders on hand. Think about the people before that machine with all the sub-assemblies that they're creating. Those sub-assemblies are, are piling up in front of the machine, and people are wasting their time and their efforts and a lot of money and in inventory creating work in process. Then think of the machine. It's working so hard, it's bound at some point in time to give it up. So that machine is at risk, and your company is at risk. 
Then finally think of all the people on the other end, from warehousemen to salespeople to retailers to everybody else. They don't have any merchandise to sell, at least nowhere near as much as they should. So the bottom line of that one is, there is always a bottleneck. If you were to take the time to find the bottlenecks in your business and remove them, even if it's expensive, you'll find that the entire business flows much more smoothly. And you know, there's always a bottleneck. Sometimes it's you. If people are lining up at your door, if you haven't answered emails, if you have texts waiting for you, those people are waiting for an answer before they can do the job that you hired them to do. Sometimes that bottleneck is you. This is Dave Burkus for the Burkus Report for Ion Business. See you next time.